Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a water texture in V-Ray. For this session I'm going to be using V-Ray within Rhino, but you can also use V-Ray within any other software or any other rendering software you can apply these same methods towards. Now I've got a simple model here where I've modelled a courtyard with a tree inside and we've got our water which is this plane in blue and also our kind of bed of our river or our pond or kind of whatever body of water is which is this part in pink. I also have a sunlight model in our scene to give us some direct light to work with and we've got a background plane here to which I've applied a background image which will provide us with any reflections we might be using in our scene. So if I just go back here I've set up a camera which we're going to be working with and I'm just going to render out a preview of this so we can get a sense of how the scene looks without our kind of water texture added in. So this is the basic scene and you'll see we've kind of just got a grey plane there where our water would be. So I've just turned on my interactive renderer and we're going to start by creating our basic water texture. So in Rhino, in our materials, I'm going to make a new material and we're going to just make a generic material here and I'm going to call this water And much like the glass material, the water actually will have no colour. We're going to make it perfectly transparent first. So we're going to give it a diffuse of black. And I'm going to apply this material onto my plane so you can see it working. I'm just selecting that blue plane just below this menu here. And we're just going to right click on the water and apply to selection. So you can see as I edit it. So we've made it a black diffuse. I'm going to make the reflection fully white so it's fully reflective surface and you can see that now it's reflecting the tree in the window frame above and then we're going to make it fully refractive by just turning the refraction up to white as well and which is making it transparent and you can now see the kind of riverbed texture I've got below there which is just a kind of texture of some stones sitting below that texture so this is essentially a glass material we've made here now the difference between glass and water is the kind of surface ripples you get on the water. So that is the next thing we need to apply onto the top of this texture. To do that we're going to be using what's called a bump nap to give a replication of this kind of wavy surface. So if you scroll down on the material to maps and under maps is this bump and normal mapping or we'll click it on to enable it, open up the drop down menu and then within the bump map, within this kind of image holder here we're going to insert not a kind of typical bitmap because we haven't got an image file for this but we're going to use one of V-Ray's ready-made ready -made maps called a noise map and we're going to be using the noise A for this. Um, so by default the noise map is kind of gives you a kind of vague noise which is a kind of black and white map which can simulate ripple effects on this um, and there are kind of certain points you can change on the noise map. For now we're just going to leave it as standard and go back to our bump and you can see in our preview we've got something here but actually in my interactive render if I keep this kind of going in the background you'll notice that there's not too much difference let's have a look from this angle you can kind of see it might be doing something there but let's look at it back from our window view and see if we can kind of make out any difference there so at the moment I'm not really reading that as affecting it. You can slightly see there's something happening at the back here but I think because we haven't mapped the image and given it a size on our texture on our kind of plane here we can't really see how big the ripples are coming out. So what I'm going to do is we'll leave this running and I'm just going to minimize it. And we're going to select our object and we're going to texture map it. We're just going to apply a box mapping and I'm just going to draw out, I don't really need to worry too much about the size for now, but a kind of generic size there, quite small. And then once I've made it, you'll see with that object selected, we get this XYZ size here. And I'm going to just change this so it's a thousand by a thousand by a thousand. So it's a kind of meter box map there. So each part of the box is a meter. Now let's go back to my frame and see how that's affected it. So we're getting some ripples there, you can slightly see it, it's still quite hard to see and I think that's probably because we've got a kind of mixture of our fully transparent object and maybe the ripples aren't quite strong enough. So what we can do now is we can have a play around with some of these settings, sort of increase the intensity of this effect or increase the kind of how dense and thick they are. 
So let's up the bumper mount. Let's put it up to five and see how that changes it. So now you can see, we can start to see those ripples a lot more clearly. Yeah. And we're getting a kind of much more distorted reflection in there, which is looking a lot nicer. You can also go back into the map here and we can play around with the amplitude and frequency of this noise. There are also kind of, once you, if you scroll down as well, we can change the color manipulation as well if we want to, and we can change the color parameters of this. The black and the white basically refers to how pushed up or pushed down the ripples would be. If we made it more of a gray, the ripples would be less intense. Change it there, and you'll notice in my update, if I can make it a light gray in there, the ripples will sort of fade and they'll be a lot less intense on there. So if you want a kind of intense ripple on there, keep it a strong black color and a white so it's got a good variation of distance on that bump map. The way bump maps work is they push down on the object where it's black and they push up on the object where it's white to simulate that surface ripple. So I think that's working quite well for now, so we're going to keep that on there. So the next thing you might want to add is you might want to kind of give the water a bit of colour, a bit of depth. At the moment it's kind of fully transparent, so we've got this kind of perfectly clear water, but that might not be the effect you're looking for. You might want it to kind of be a bit dull, a bit dirtier. And to do that we can add what's called a fog colour here. Now what the fog does is it can simulate a kind of um, an inky colour or give a tint to the whole water colour. So if for instance we want it to be a sort of greeny blue colour, maybe sort of this, you can see in my preview as I put that on, it goes this kind of bottle green shade there. But by default the fog effect is very strong and you'll notice as I've applied it now we've almost completely lost the transparency of our water. I can't see through it at all now. So in order to bring that back, we need to turn down this fog multiplier. And I usually set it to a 0 0.01 or somewhere around that value. And that way you can see now that we're getting the tint of the water there, but we can still see the kind of pebbles on my riverbed. And you can see how it changes depending on how close the surface is to the surface of the water. So it gets a deeper color the further away the objects are. And we can kind of play around with that color it could be more blue, more green. Usually you kind of want it to have less colour to it, making it a bit more muted here. To make it look a bit more realistic, because it wouldn't be a kind of vivid blue colour or a vivid green. So something like that might work quite well in this case. So we've got a kind of bit of greeny blue there, but it's quite subtle. You might also want to turn down the reflections a bit if you don't want them to be as sharp as we are now. And to do that, we can just take this reflection colour down as well. And the sort of lower you do that, the less reflective the image will be. And you'll just be able to kind of see a bit more clearly the kind of water beyond. Now, one other thing you can add, which you sometimes get in water, is something called a fall off, which is a kind of way of controlling the sharpness of the reflection, the kind of more horizontal you are to the camera plane. Um, to add this in, we can just add it into the reflection glossiness. So by default, the kind of reflection is glossy all the way through the image. If we click on this and find our fall off texture, which is down at the bottom here, fall off. What this does is it starts to affect that glossiness. So we're only getting it glossy kind of the closer it is to the edge of the image and it gets less glossy as we fade out. Now, by default, that probably won't look that great. It's kind of looking a bit hazy here. So actually, we want to sort of play around with that a bit. And if we make the color A a much sort of lighter gray, you can start to see it, its effect working. So you can see how it's sharper at the base of the image and it gets more faded as we come out. And I think actually maybe a little bit lighter. You can use it quite subtly in this way. I think somewhere like that might work. So you can see now that our kind of reflection is a lot sharper the closer we are to the object and as we pan out it gets a bit more hazy and a bit more distorted and this would kind of replicate what a sort of real world water might look like and the reflection on the surface might look like as well. You could also do the same for the reflection colour to play with that a bit as well. Um, we can always copy maps just by right clicking on the blue pit here, going copy and then right clicking on the place and paste in 
that will copy it over. And it's quite a subtle effect, but it would just mean the reflection kind of gradiates out a bit more as we come up. But I don't think it's kind of particularly working there, so I think I'm going to remove that for now. And there you have it, that was a basic water texture using a noise map, the fog colour, and the fall off in the reflection glossiness.